So the chickens have the entire yard to run through, and they're all standing at the deck. You know why? Because I'm over here. But, whatever, I'm having lunch. Day old Burgerville cheeseburger. Actually, it's two days old. Hmm, hope it's still good. Goes with a Burgerville cheeseburger. Leftover mimosa. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Oh, I'm eating now. Okay, so lunch is over. Mimosa is gone. Mostly gone. I'm going to make another one. And so I guess what I'm going to attempt to do now is my first try at free motion quilting. So what I have is my commission quilt, my Singer 1963 Touch and Sew Deluxe Zigzag Model 600, the original, not any letters or numbers afterwards. And I guess I'm just going to get started. Just kidding. First thing you want to do is start with a quilt sandwich to practice on. Just a second, let me go grab one. Hmm. Something tells me that's not the right kind of sandwich. So, what we're gonna do is go into my scrap bin here. Whoop! Hey look, all that fancy stuff right there. Grab what looks to be muslin and a scrap piece of batting and we're gonna start practicing okay so I have my muslin and scrap batting it's time to start quilting to see if I can figure out how to do this so I have my machine set for regular stitching that's probably not going to work so well I've got a regular plate in with my feed dogs up, which is probably not going to work very well either. Hmm, something tells me I need to go through my bin of goodies. So, somewhere in here, I have a bin of goodies. Those are, ooh, are these attachments? What kind of attachments? Ta-da! Okay. I don't have any plates that I can use that will work very well. Do I have any... What the hell is this? Hmm. That one might work. Uh, I'm really confused. I guess it's time to consult the manual. Which is in this mess somewhere, too. Is it here? Aha! All right. So. Oh boy, this is Okay, so I've come across something that looks like the correct settings, which would be for darning. Cuz I know with darning that gives you free motion. So, Looks like what I need to do is set it from AK3, which it is, and then inside, that broke like the day that we got it, I need to set it to D. Fancy, huh? Looks like I can stick with my same foot that I have. Lower the bar. Use my fancy knee pedal here. See what happens.
front looks good and the back looks good. Not bad for a first attempt. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna try it with the real thing. Wish me luck! Okay, so I have changed my thread to a brown thread because I decided that I want to, to blend a little more into the background. Plus most of the, you know, it's green and brown, so you can't really go wrong with brown. Alright, so just to make sure that my tension was still okay, I practiced a little bit. I think I need a little more practice, but I don't want to. I just want to get going. So, while I'm super nervous about just going for it, I think I'm going to go with something really basic, do a few swirls here and there, um, nothing major, and just see where I go from. So, peek! Seems like the best thing you've got to do is just be really steady on your stitches. Don't try to move too fast or too slow. See where I've got so far. All right. Get this to. Can't really tell too well with this, but I think it will work. Which means I've got a lot more to go. So wish me luck. So with the exception of just a few hiccups right there <laughs> I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out so I my frog and fairy cute anyway so I am going to now get ready to do the border yay did I say border? I meant binding. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to be taking the backing of my quilt and folding it over to create the binding. I'm just going to, well, freewheel this because I don't really feel like pinning or making this more complicated than it really needs to be. So, yay! So I suppose I should explain what I mean by just freewheel it. Basically, what I am doing is simply taking the binding, folding it up to where it meets with the border of the front, flipping it over, and then just 
sewing. Basically, it looks like about a one eighth inch stitch just along the edge to create the binding. So, hopefully this will work out. I've done it a couple times before, but you never know. All right, so now what I'm doing is I am finishing off my binding by tying the ends of the strings off. That way, make sure that there aren't any loose strands and that it stays together. And so, here we have the end result of my first free motion quilt on my sewing machine. Not bad for an ancient monster, is it? Come! Okay, so I just had a freak out moment. I looked at the back of the blanket that I just finished. And it appears I have forgotten to sign it. So, time not to freak out. Instead, I think what I'm going to do is either take another piece of the background fabric and stitch, you know, embroider my name and the date, or I will just take some of this twill tape that I have lying around in my craft stuff of stamping, scrapbooking crap that I never use anymore, and use a fabric marker sign it and date it and then just sew it on that way. We'll see. Okay, so here's the decision. I went ahead and stitched it on the edges. You can barely see just by doing a basic whip stitch. And so now Frog and Fairy Baby Quilt is ready to be sent off. So I uh, hope I didn't scare you too much with the free motion quilting. It's for just, you know, deciding to just go for it on a quilt that I spent quite a bit of time on. Um, so I hope I encourage you to do the same. Happy quilting!